Right, so this weekend is National Hill Climb Champs. Now, I'm going to do my classic review this year. It's pretty short because the climb is so decisive that realistically there are very few people who can win. Anyway, what we're going to do is have a look at the climb itself. So here is the struggle. It is four kilometers long. It averages 8.2%, but you can see it's like mega steep here, like 13%, flattens off little bit steep here, 10%, and then it goes literally downhill into a 500 meter wall at 16%. So realistically, uh, it's a very long effort. So this is Labrat when he won it. And uh, we're just going to go through, first of all, we'll do the women's, then we'll do the men's. The women's is very short. Uh, in my opinion, it's very obvious Illy Garden is going to actually smash everyone unless she is a disaster. She's won every single hill climb this year, um, which we can see on Spin Day uh, Awards. Here we go. Won every single hill climb. Um, her tumble time, uh, which was kind of the most uh, important thing in relationship to, uh, sorry, in relationship to her, uh, the power she's going to do. She did 272 watts, pretty sure she's like sub 50 kilos, so it's big watts per kilo. Um, but yeah, 1421, I think on the day, if you look at where she finished overall, um, it was a pretty respectable thing. I think just outside the top 10, you can see 12th overall, that includes men. So like, obviously very strong performance from her and I really just don't don't see anyone else uh coming close um to it to be honest like if you look here she was did 1434 um so yeah binned a lot of people so I really do think um it should be a pretty comfortable win for her um so yeah I mean there are some strong women racing for sure like Frances Owen has had decent season um Emily Lockwood she does quite a lot around these parts um so yeah like there are good people but in my opinion, it should be a pretty uh, easy win. I couldn't see anyone else on the start list who looked like outrageously good. So I do think, um, yeah, Eli Gardner is definitely the big favorite to win. Now we're going to go on to the men's. Again, there's not that many people to pick from. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't actually get in, which is kind of iconic, but um, I'm actually quite happy that I didn't because now I can just do nothing and not run my bike for two weeks. Anyway, we can look at the end and like, there's loads of strong riders, but obviously the feather and the sack, are the real good people. Uh, the other there's the other super freak is Paddy Clark, and we'll go into those. I reckon those are the three super freaks that I've come up with who I reckon are going to have outrage. Like Will Loudon, he is good. Gabe Della, fan of the YouTube channel, he is strong. Archie Cross, the man with the most UCI points in this uh, race, he's obviously going well, um, but probably not quite as well as he thought he would be. So, yeah, again, like there are strong people. Kieran Wynn, Katana, again, good. But at the end of the day, they're just on a different level, the Super Freak. So we'll, we'll go into some Super Freak analysis. Um, now, we'll look at Laverick first. Well, no, actually, let's look at Paddy Clark, because he's probably the person you're like, who is this Pat Patrick Clark man? Now, it's a good question. And um, he did some big numbers. This is about seven watts per kilo for the big man for 12 minutes. Very impressive. He rides exclusively in the saddle. So I've been heard. And um, he only lost to Feather by 0.7 of a second. Apparently, he's on some, like, Alley, no, sorry, some alloy wheels. He's got an ISM saddle. Apparently, it's pure carnage, his optimization. But I've heard from good sources that he's going to be very optimized for um, the struggle. I do think the reason he was so close to Feather was the fact that it's a fast climb, and Feather is generally not good on fast climbs because he climbs out the saddle, so does look, is a bit of a parachute. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the... I think he could have a real good ride on the best day of his life. Could he win it? I reckon, yeah. Take big risk on the descent. You never know. I mean, the descent's not too much. But even so, I think, you know, he, he'll be up there for sure. But it is hard to say kind of anyone's going to get close to the sack and feather, in my opinion. Now, I'll go over to Ed Laverick. I reckon the favourite from most people. Um, and to be fair, he's done some big numbers uh, this year. Um, he's cracked out 417 watts for 12 minutes almost. So if we look at his previous effort up the struggle, uh, which I believe we have over here, it's significantly more watts. He only did 4.8, so he gained 10 watts. So significant growing up has been done. And um, yeah, he was close to his time, which was like setting a massive uh, uh, taily. So very impressive. And you can see even the tumble, it's not completely flat. And this bottom bit, he's cracking out 426 watts. I put his weight in about 60 kilos, maybe 59, something like that. So 7.2 watts per kilo for eight and a half minutes. That is strong. And then just like the top part, if you have been to the tumble, you'll know um, is only 5%. So he kind of bl not blew up, but did less watts there. So anyway, that's probably like maybe the favorite. Um, now, Andrew Feather has kind of been a bit of a bottle job and hasn't really done any hill climbs against Labrack all year, I think, except maybe Widdicombe, which he did win, but that was a super short one. So kind of not expected. But this was a good performance from Andrew Feather, 450 watts for 12 minutes. Now, Feather is, I reckon, 63 kilos. 
It's not the best I've seen. I've seen him do 470 for 10 on a steeper climb, but this again is a snake pass, the one we analyzed with Paddy. And that was, um, yeah, like pretty impressive performance. You can see he does this trademark, just crack it at like 700 watts for the last um, 20 seconds, even though it's like, I don't really know why it's 3%. Why, why do you say that in the tank? I don't know. But anyway, he seems to do it. Did it last year in nationals and then broke someone's bike oil. But anyway, um, this is, yeah, so... Pretty strong performance from the big man, 447 watts, 7 watts per kilo, it does go well, um, and yeah, I think on a steeper climb, like if we look at the average speed of this, 26k an hour, if we look at the 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 struggle, sorry, it's chaos, um, it's 21k an hour, obviously there's like 50k an hour here, but you're not gaining anything, and then this last bit, you can just imagine, like he's going to be just cracking out 500 watts, absolutely flying up this part, so again, and then you're going to go, okay, okay, well, how are they going to go on the struggle? Now, I got some secret information that potentially no one else has on the internet um, about the struggle, which was that Andrew Feather went to do the struggle and he did a recce. Now, this was Ed Laverick's time, right, on the struggle official hill climb, 12.28, right? Seven seconds off Dennis. I think the hill climb segment might be slightly different, hence why, you know, or it's like such a good match that this is why there's a shorter segment. But anyway where Laverick was faster than Dennis. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, this was his time. And then we're going to go find this thing here. Oh, wow. 12.24. So he was actually quicker um, than Ed Laverick by four seconds. Not quicker than Dennis, but nonetheless, you can see here, his personal record, Andrew Feather, is 12.24. Now, he kept this right on private, but, you know, I've got a lot of sleuths around who can sort these things out for me. And um, so what would this tell you? This would tell you that he's going to beat Laverick. But the issue is... If Laverick's going to crack out another 20 watts, which maybe he will, you know, we've seen it before, the day of the climb, the big man grows up and gains 20 watts like he did on Haytor, it could be Laverick, but I think it's going to be real close uh, between those two, and I really don't know which way it's going to go, um, both of them are just, like, quite different, I think Ed is way but stronger on the longer climbs, Andrew's an animal on the short, steep climbs, but this one kind of combines both, because it's got fast sections and short sections, but then you do think about Haytor a couple of years ago, and uh, Ed Laverick won that by just miles, and Andrew Feather was miles back, and I thought he'd win that year, because I'd seen some big numbers, so I think it's going to be real close, um, it's interesting to see how it goes, uh, but for the win, I'm going to go with Andrew Feather, I reckon just the last bit, he's just going to grow up, and just as a nuke himself, so that's my prediction, but it's tough, it could be either of them, and I think Paddy Clark is going to be probably the person in the third, would be my prediction, but anyway, cheers for watching, let me know who you think is going to win below, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.